we're here with Mickey Curry. And for me, for me, this is huge. This is huge. I followed, I followed this drummer for such a long time. So to get to meet him, get to meet you, is just, it's big for me, man, big. It's embarrassing. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Thanks um, a lot. So man, we've just great. seen your sound check and we've had a kit yeah. walk through, yeah. which is superb. Thank you, great. Um, tell us, you started playing drums when you were 11. Yeah. And you were, you were in the band with your brothers? I was, yeah. And then, how, yeah. how, did, how did the rest of this I, happen? I, All I really the don't. And I, 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 yeah, I don't know. You know, I, uh, my brothers and I, we had a band called The Rack. The Rack. W R A C K, yeah. and uh, we played at our school dances. And we, the three of us, my brother George played guitar, my brother Jody sang and played harmonica. Um, we were on student council, so the student council got to pick the bands for the dances. So of course we always got to yeah. <laughs> play the school dances. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and you know I just fell in love with playing drums. And uh, my my teacher, my music teacher in school, said told my parents, you know, you should think about getting him a drum kit because he's, he shows some aptitude for this and he yeah. loves doing it. And I think he'd be okay. So my father went out and got me a little Gretsch kit and it awesome. was uh, fantastic. We bought it from the local guy in town. Uh, he was the big drummer guy, uh, working working drummer in my hometown. And yeah. he was selling his old Gretsch set. So my dad bought it from him, Johnny Herb. Thank you, John. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I still have that kit. I Amazing. In my yeah, I love Amazing. it. Amazing. But I always, you know, I mean, you just go through school, you're just listening to everything, and music was really, you know, like, you know, I was feeling everything I heard. You yeah. Know, you, you really get uh, sort of wound up in, um, you know, wanting to be able to do that. And at what point did you think, do you know what? I'm actually going to follow this as a, yeah, as a I, career. Yeah, I just, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, I still don't know. If it's right, you know what I mean. You, but you still don't. It's like, okay, what am I going to do for a living now when I have yeah. to get, when I really have to get a job and yeah. start working? So uh, I was probably fifteen or sixteen. I got um, I got a call to go to a recording studio in Connecticut. I was fifteen. Uh, they hired me to do a commercial, a little bank commercial. It was like twenty bucks or something. And, uh, we loaded the drums in the car. My mom drove me up to the studio and we set up the kit. And I did a little, it was like, they needed like 38 seconds of this little piece of music. So I did that, the guy paid me and I thought, this is unbelievable. I can get paid to play drums. It was sort of my first paying gig. Started going into New York. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just take the train in, see what, you know, did a couple of showcase things with some bands and uh, did a couple of records. First studio I ever worked in in New York was Electric Lady, which for me was like, wow, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and the Power Station. You know, oh yeah, there. wow, yeah. So, um, I worked on G. Smith's solo record there, and I worked with a band called Tom Dickey and the Desires. And uh, at the power, at um, Electric Lady, while I was doing that session, Tommy Matola, who managed Hall and Oates, was also Tom Dickey's manager, and said. Uh, can you come, you want to come do some tracks for the Hall Notes record? Uh, we're going to be setting up next week. Just leave your kit, leave your drums, and come back <laughs> next week. And so I did. And, uh, you know, I did uh, half the Private Eyes album yeah. with them. And then I was, that was it. I was on the road with them. While I was doing the Private Eyes record, Bob Clearmountain, who had done GE's record with me at the Power Station, produced that, um, called and said, there's a guy from Canada I'm working with, and I'd love you to play drums. So great. His name's Brian Adams and we'll get together. So a month later I was in the studio with Adams at Power Station working on that record. So I did, was, I did Private Eyes and the You Want It, You Got It record within about three weeks of each other. So, you know, I got the gig with, Daryl asked me to go on the road. Okay. Great. So I spent the summer on the road with GE for his solo thing. We, we opened for Squeeze. That was fun. And um, it was the first time I'd ever been across the country. And everything. So that was really a great experience and then in the fall I was on the road with Daryl and John and that was the beginning of that yeah and it just so happened that Brian would be in the studio when we were off the Hall Notes thing was off so I got to either go to Vancouver or I'd go into New York and do tracks for Brian uh, and that went until about 86 or 7 and Daryl was gonna go do a solo record so there was no Hall and Notes for a while and I went up to do Into the Fire with yeah. Brian and he asked me to just come on the road. So, awesome. 
here I am, 114 years later. Yeah, 114 years later, yeah. <laughs> when you're playing live, you've been with Brian now for at least 30 yeah. years. Yeah, wow. Time, yeah. So, if you had to choose one song, just one song. To play live? That would be the one. Which is the one that when he calls out, tonight we're doing this, you go, oh, yes. Yeah. There are a couple I love to play. I love okay. to play Have You Ever Really Loved a Woman? Okay. Because it's a, it's just a great groove, and it's a really nice song to play. And it's just sort of right in my wheelhouse. You know, it's got that, it's a beautiful tempo. It's not really complicated, but you have to feel that song to get through it. You know, so I, I love doing that. I love, uh, I love playing Somebody. That's fun. Yeah, what um, a track. So let's yeah. talk about let's yeah. quickly It's talk Only about Love. That. It's only what love. a good, track. That's yes. really Solid that's track. fun yeah. to play because it's fun. Yeah, like you know, we do a whole shtick for those those songs, you know, and um, they're fun to do. So, if I had to pick a live track, it'd probably be one of those. I guess that's like a night can be fun. Yeah, uh, you know, all the all the songs are great songs. So. Yeah, for me, somebody yeah. off the record album yeah, yeah. Um, was the track that years and years ago when I had just started drumming was the one. Mm -hmm that I would listen and I would bop. My head yeah. would be popping off because to me, it was so solid. The nuances, the nuances yeah. that you throw in there. And it's just, you are locked in with that lovely guitar part. Yeah, um, Keith's got that. Yeah, and for me, that is what drumming is about. Yeah. Of course, I love Wacom, I love yeah. Vinny, but for me, playing for the song and just getting in that nitty gritty, yeah. bang. It's always been that for me, though. Uh, you know, that's I think that's another reason, uh, like I was working as much as I was, is because you have to play the song. Yes. Which is something I knew as a kid. You know, you listen to Motown records, you listen to any kind of R and B stuff. Drummers are playing the song. Yeah. They're, they're not stomping on a vocal. They're not putting fills in where they don't need to go. They're just. It's about getting a groove, locking it in, and uh, you know, playing the song. Yeah. It's all about the song. It's about that three minutes of. It's not about your drum track. No, that's right. It's not about you. Know, you. That's right. uh, it's yeah. not about me. Yeah. And uh, look at what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> Watch me go. Yeah. I'm going to play everything I know. Yeah. In three. You just have to play the song. And, yeah. and I learned that with working with Daryl, too, because he's so soulful in his approach. Um, you know, less is more, and it's really just about dropping that backbeat where it needs to go and getting that feel. You know, It's always been about feel and the, just playing the song. So, you know, you need a little bit of technique uh, to be able to do that, but you really need to feel it more than anything. Yeah. You know, um, technique's important, but it's it's really not the thing. You know, but yeah. I met Steve Gadd once at the power station. Somebody said, you know, Gadd's upstairs working with Clapton. So I ran up there. I, there's no way they was going to get into the room, but I thought, well, maybe he'll come out and use the, the men's room or something. Because yeah. <laughs> while I'm sitting in the little lobby, thinking, can he stand up right here? So my friends go, go. Drummer, just go, just, come on, don't say hi. Yeah. So I kind of tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm really sorry about you, man. I'm in Korean. I am such a fan of yours. I can't, you real, I have no idea, man. I just had to say hi. And he was, hey, man, nice to meet you. You working here? Yeah, I'm working with him. Oh, great, man. Good luck. Nice to meet you, man. It was really nice. Thanks. You know, he was so nice. And, oh, that is cool. Yeah. yeah. You feel great. Yeah. yeah. You feel great. And Kelsey's the same way. Yeah. I've met Jim a few times now, and he's just the sweetest guy. Just really nice, you know. How about that? That makes it all better, though, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it all better. Um, we have just seen your sound check. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed was you sit really low. Yeah. Really low. Yeah. Um, but I'm not saying that as a uh, as a negative point, because to watch you play in, mm. despite how low you are, mm. you are, you flow. Ah. Oh my God! You get around that kit. You can play light, you can powerhouse the out of it. Why do you sit so low? Uh, well, it, I had a, a back issue. I, I was in a car accident when I was 21 years old, and I, I crushed the three lower vertebrae in my back. And it was about, it was a few months of you know, rehab, kind of don't do anything. And when I finally sat back down at the drum kit, I couldn't play. I, my back was just killing me. I couldn't sit the way I normally sat, which was a bit higher from where I am now. And I had the snare a bit lower, and so I thought I, I gotta fix this. I have to figure out how to do it. So I raised the snare up a bit and tilted it a bit more, so I didn't have a big throw for backbeats. 
And then I just, I tried raising the seat up so that I'd be sort of trying to get my spine a little straighter, and that was killing me after five minutes. I couldn't, you know, because the position of your feet and your knees, I said, try dropping it down. So I lowered it, and it felt a little better, and I lowered it a little more, and it felt a little better. So I just lowered it to where my knees weren't uncomfortable, yep. and I could still get up on the ball of my foot without sort of clacking on the, the heel of the footboards, you know, because you're sitting, when you're that low, you know, you're, it's tough to get up on the That's toe, right? right? Yeah. But I have figured out a way to sort of, I can lean kind of sideways onto the pedal now, which is a, uh, and you know, with that snare drum up a bit yeah. higher, it's easier to, it's closer, easier to get to, and I have the kit pretty close now, you know, um, and um, I used to have a, a, the big giant kit, you know, lots of rack toms and double kicks, and but I always had it close, so it was like, you know, my my um, my drum tech with Holland Oates, Anthony used to say, it's like a little Ferrari up there. <laughs> it's like you got a little sports car, you know. <laughs> it's like all this stuff. It's like right, everything's right where you need it, you know. So, um, but now with Brian, the setup's way simpler. And, yeah. uh, you know, I just sort of the basic kit. But sitting that low is is way more comfortable for my back, and I've just gotten sort of used to doing that. Now. Yeah, energy. Mm. I've seen you quite a few times today, Mark. Matt, you don't. It's all coffee. You don't let up. You, you do not let up. You are. Yeah. You're solid, power, energy. You're smiling. You're loving it. Did you get tired? I'm tired right now. I'm tired all the time. But you know, you just uh, get it up for the gig, man. And you know, it's so much fun to play. You know. It's just so much fun to sit at it. You, I'm 15 years old again. Every time I sit at the drum kit, you turn into that kid. Like, oh, let me add it, you know? Yeah. And when you walk off stage, you're back to 114? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. But, you yeah. know, you just, you just, it's so much fun to play drums. I'm having more fun now than I've ever had playing, you know? I think you don't worry about it as much, and uh, we're all really comfortable on stage with each other. Yeah, you can see that. We know the songs, you know. Um, Brian's such a great singer. He is such a good singer, you know. And if he's giving it every night, we're giving it. Um, two more quick things. Your drum kit. Yeah. Yamaha. Yeah. Zildjian Simples. Yes. Uh, we had a quick walk through, so we'll put some photos up. But talk us through. So on this tour, you're using? Uh, I'm using, well, for this, uh, the, European, uh, the European tours, um, I have, it's an older uh, Absolute Maple custom kit that Yamaha was uh, nice enough to make for me. It's a silver sparkle. Um, it's a 24 by, I think it's an 18 kick, 14, 16 floors. I think that's a 12 rack. Um, I've got an old, I, I love uh, seven inch maple shell snare drums. That's all I want to use. They're just the best. Yeah. I've got a bunch of them. All Evans heads and um, cymbals. What can I tell you about my cymbals? Uh, I use 15 inch new beats. We've got, um, I think that's a K dark. Crash. Yeah, it's got the K's there. That's right. And the uh, lovely A custom with the, the rivets. The A custom, yeah. that 19 inch A custom with yeah. the rivets, I love. It's just three rivets in it. Well, two, one's missing yeah. now, but <laughs> it's got just enough of that, you know, so you can do that uh, sort of. Get that sort of ginger baker wash, yeah. which I love. Yeah, because I love those records. You know, the '60s records. All those guys used rivets, ride cymbals. So you hear the wash. You don't really hear the stick on the cymbal, but you can hear the little really that fine sort of metally, and that's such a great sound. Yeah, I love that sound. I've got one last question. I'll wait there. <laughs> Torn is so hectic. Yeah, it's crazy, and I read somewhere. Um, when I was trying to trying to contact you last yeah. year, I read somewhere that when you're not touring, you lead the most un rock and roll lifestyle. Absolutely, there is. Man. What do you do? I don't chill? do anything. We just uh, my my I've been with my wife Susan. We met when we were 15 years old. Wow! Yeah. And uh, wow. we got married 37 years ago. And uh, 38 maybe. And. Um, She's absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, I, I could never, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. She, you know, just, I know you hear that all the time from guys, but it's true. I'm, 
completely lost without it. And we just, you know, I, I live in the town I grew up in. I was born and raised there. And um, you know, we got a place, we live out in the woods. And uh, we just, I, I don't really do anything when I'm home. You know, listen to music, drive around the car, we go out, we go out, we have friends and hang out. But I'm not home a lot lately. <laughs> so, you know, those days at home are really, really important. Um, and I just want to say a few thanks because um, first we've got to say thanks to Gavin at Yamaha. Yes. And Jason and Tony because they Absolutely. were um, yeah. instrumental in making this yes. Yes. happen. Yeah. Well, and of course, got to say Mike, your drum tech, yeah. because he's told us some amazing stories, yeah. which are great. Um, we've got to say thanks to you, Mickey, because yeah. the welcome that you've given us. Oh, stop it. Took has been amazing. Great. You've got to say thanks because sometimes when when we do these things, people go, "Oh God, no, yeah. I'm not really into this." Yeah. But you came out arms open. Oh, hey no, guys, that's funny. come We're on all, stage. You know what? Thank you, thank you. It's the drummer world, man. We're uh, you know anybody who plays drums, it's kind of like this club. I have found. Yeah. Right. Drummers are a completely different animal from the rest of the guitar players. Don't talk to each other. <laughs> Piano players go. They sit there and go. I can play like that. <laughs> you know, singers are like. You know, oh, my drummer was off today, so. Drummers share. <laughs> Drummers want to share. Drummers? Yeah. What did you do? Oh, it's show like me. the club, yeah. you know? It, it, there's none of that sort of weird, competitive, weird. It's all about just um, just the big love for each other, you know? Yeah. I Every drummer I've ever met, you know? And I, I just love that. So, you know, just how hard is it to be nice? It's Thanks, really man. hard to be. <laughs> I can't do it. I yeah. can't do it. It's really hard for me. You're being so kind to, to us. So but I, I, you know, I just love that we're all drummers and we're all in the we're all in the same thing. And uh, you know, let's just keep it going for, for each other. And young guys and kids, and if they want to do it, yeah, encourage it and you know help them out. And you're fantastic. You've got a great place. Thank you. Thank just you. the fact that you do this, yeah, and you know, you are sort of uh, you are progressive progressively moving the drum world into the future as opposed to, you know, a lot of things which are just sort of disappearing <laughs> these days. Yeah. You know? And the music business is not an easy thing. And, uh, right. you know, if a kid wants to play drums, man, just got to encourage Let's him. Let's play, that's right. Let's get going. Yeah. Let's help him. So. Yeah, that's right. So I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Mickey, thank you so much. It's an absolute honor, honestly, Thanks, buddy. to be able to shake your hand. Well, thank you so it's really much. nice of you, man. Thank Thanks you. a lot.